In this video, we'll create a login form using HTML and CSS. So let's take a look at it here. So at the top, we have our user image here, then the user login heading, followed by the email input. And if we don't put a proper email in, it's gonna give us this message here. And then we have the password field down here. And then of course, our login button down here, followed by the forget password link. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out what we'll need to get started. So in the description of this video will be a free download for the HTML and CSS login form files here. So I'm gonna have index.html and style.css uh, open with Sublime Text, the free text editor, which you can get from sublimetext.com. And I'm gonna have index.html open with Google Chrome while we're developing the form. Also included in the starter files will be the mountain background image and the person image right here at the top of the form. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside and let's open up index.html and style.css in sublime text and take a look at what's already included for us. So from the top of index.html we have the uh, HTML doc type and then inside of our head section we have the title so I'm just gonna write a title out here with HTML and CSS login form okay and then underneath our title we have the latest version of bootstrap CSS which is bootstrap 4 then we have the latest version of jQuery to run bootstrap followed by the latest version of popper JS, which is recommended for Bootstrap. Then we have Bootstrap JS with Bootstrap 4. And then, of course, a link to style.css, which we have right here. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that I'm connected to Google Chrome by typing in a little bit of text here for the version we're working on, which I am, as you can see here. And now let's go ahead and get started with the first tag for our login form. Okay, so let's go over to uh, Sublime Text and we're gonna wrap our form here with something called a modal dialog. So modal-dialog as our class. And then since our text is centered throughout the form, we'll just use the text center class here with bootstrap. Okay, and then inside of the, our modal dialog class, we'll have a column class so our form is taking up two-thirds of the page here and then once we flex it down to underneath 576 pixels it'll take up 100 percent so you can always change that um, with your bootstrap column but I'm just gonna write call SM-8 so once we get up to 576 pixels it will take out of take up 8 out of 12 columns and then we'll use a class here called main section. Okay, so now let's drop down and let's add our modal content class for Bootstrap. And then we can close out the tag here. And then inside of this, we'll start off with our uh, image at the top. So we'll use the call 12, since it's gonna take all 12 columns inside of our main section, and then user-image for the class for our image. Okay, then we'll need to add the uh, person image. So person.png inside of the img folder. So it'll be image source img forward slash person.png. Okay, and now if we go ahead and refresh, there we have our gigantic image showing up. So I guess I forgot to resize it, but we'll resize it in the CSS. So let's move on to our heading beneath that. So we'll use the call 12 tag again, or class rather, and then user dash name for the class here for our user login text right here. And then we'll use a heading one, and I'm just gonna write user login. Okay, then we can drop down underneath the div. 
There's our user login heading. And the next thing that we'll add will be the uh, form input class, which will have our form inside of it. So we'll say div class call 12 form dash input, and then close out the div. And inside of here, we'll have our form. So we'll just use the form tag. And then for each uh, input, it's going to have its own class. So we'll say div class form dash group and then open and close the div. And we'll have our input inside of it. So input type name, or you can use input type uh, email. And then class form dash control. And then we'll have our placeholder. So for the placeholder, we'll just write enter email. Okay, so now we can drop down and add our next form group for the password. There we have our input. Okay, so we'll be using the same div class form group. So to save us some time, if you want, you can just copy the form group from above, or you can type it out. So uh, div class form dash group and then close out the div and inside of it we'll have our input so input type password and then class form dash control once again and then for our placeholder we'll just write password or you can write enter password Okay, so now the next thing that we'll add will be our button, now that we have both input fields here. So let's go ahead and add our button. So we'll use the button tag, and we'll say type submit, and then we'll use the um, green success bootstrap button, so btn btn dash success. And then I'll just write login here. Okay, so now what we'll want to do is drop down underneath our form input class to add the um, forgot password section here. So we're going to give that its own div class. So we'll say div class call 12 and then link dash part as a second class to reference it. And then we'll just have our link here. So ahref, we'll just keep it as a blank link for now. And then forgot password question mark. Okay, so now if we refresh, there we have our forgot password text underneath it. Okay, so that's everything for our HTML. Let's go ahead and move over to style.css. And we'll get started with sort of a reset style to the uh, body section of the HTML document to change our font family and the background. So we'll say body and font family. We'll reference the Google font included for us at the top, which is Barlow Semi Condensed. And then it's a sans serif font. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and change our font style. And now let's just change the background of it. So we'll use the mountain background image. So img forward slash mountain dot png. And then we don't want it to repeat. So we'll say no repeat and we'll have it centered. So center, center and fixed. Okay, so now if we come over and refresh we can only see some of it because the um, person image is so big. But we want it to cover the background also. So we'll say background size, background dash size cover, so we can see more of the image. And let's take care of our user image before we do anything else because it's so uh, large. So let's say user dash image, 
and we want it to um, be outside of the top of our form. So we'll say margin top negative 50 pixels. So it's sticking out of the top of the form. And then we'll say user dash image IMG. And let's resize it by giving it a height and width of 100 pixels. Okay, so now if we refresh, that looks much better here. Uh, let's move on to our um, form main section so we can push our form away from the top. So I'll reference the main section class here. So dot main dash section. And let's center it with margin zero auto. Okay, and then let's add some space on the top. So we'll say margin top 150 pixels. Okay, so that looks better. And now let's take away the padding. There's a little bit of padding off to the side by default, so we can make it a little bit wider here. So padding zero all around. Okay, so that looks good. So now let's move on to our background color. So let's go to the next class here underneath the main section, which is uh, modal content. So dot modal dash content. And then we'll give it its background color, which is the hex value 343495E. Okay, and then we can refresh. And the finished version, as you can see, is a little bit transparent. So let's add opacity 0.95. And you can do 0.85 or 0.9 to make it a little more transparent if you want. So that looks pretty good. Let's move on to our heading text underneath. So we'll want to make that a little bit smaller and we'll give it sort of an off gray shade. So that's going to be the username class here. So we'll say dot user dash name. Let's add some margin first. So we'll say margin top and bottom 10 pixels and then zero left right. So that looks pretty good. And let's resize our heading one. So dot user dash name and then h1 and let's change the font size to 30 pixels which is a little bit smaller and let's change the color to sort of a light gray shade with the hex value ccd 6d7 okay so now if we refresh there we have it looking just like the original until we get down to the input sections here so let's go on to um, style our button. And I'm just going to change the, uh, the E to lowercase here to match the original. OK, so we'll want to reference the, um, the form group, or rather the form input class, and then our button. So dot form dash input, and then button. And let's give it a width of 100%. And then we'll say margin. We want to push it away from the, um, the password there. So let's add some margin on the bottom. So margin bottom 20 pixels. Whoops. OK. OK, so that's looking pretty good. We also want to change the color of the button. So we're going to go with a lighter green than the regular success button with Bootstrap. So let's say button or BTN dash success. And we'll change the background color to that light sort of flat green, which is 2ECC71. And then the original doesn't have this, I don't think, but let's change the um, the border. So by default, there's a border to all buttons with Bootstrap. So we'll just change that to the same shade here. Okay, so there we go. So it's looking nice and flat with that sort of uh, mint green there. And let's change the hover color 
as well. So I'll just copy and paste this, and then we'll add colon hover to the end of it. And let's change the hex value to 27 AE 60. So 27 AE 60. Okay, so now if we refresh, we have a similar shade with the green, just a little bit darker when we hover over it. Okay, so lastly, let's move down to this password section. So we'll just reference the um, link dash part class. So dot link dash part. And let's change the background color to that gray shade. So ECF 0 F 1. Okay, and then obviously we'll want to add some padding to space out the uh, forgot password text there. So padding, we'll go with 15 pixels all around. And then let's change the border radius. So as you can see on the finished version, we have the border radius on the bottom left and bottom right. So let's say border radius 0, top left, 0, top right, and then bottom left and bottom right will have 5 pixels. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And then the only difference is we have a little bit of a border here to create sort of a shadow feel between the link part and the, um, the sort of dark blue color. So we'll say 1 pixel solid, C2, C2, C2 which is kind of a light gray shade. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, just like the original. So let's go ahead and flex it up and take a look at our finished version here. So I want to thank you for watching. Please remember to like this video, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.